family offices and ultra high networks expects a very much robust governance and substance in order to comply with regulation. Today, I have the pleasure to welcome in the studio Ilias Georgopoulos, who is IQEQ's Global Head of Private and Institutional Asset Owner, Richard uh, Bemer, which is Head of Private Wealth in Luxembourg, and Thomas Ibanez, who is Sales and Business Development Director. So Ilias, you serve two types of asset owners, don't you? Absolutely, Jérôme. We basically have the full spectrum of asset owners uh, spanning from the family offices and private individuals up to the institutional asset owners which includes endowments, foundations, sovereign wealth funds, pensions, basically the full lot. So tell me what do they have in common first? Well the convergence of the private and the institutional asset owners is a trend that has been building since a few years whether it is by regulation or by investment appetite. First of all, I think the main objective of those uh, two uh, sub-segments is really the wealth preservation mm -hmm. on the one hand and the research of extreme value in their investments with not necessarily the annual performance like asset managers would have. Uh, also, I think the second, uh, the, the second point that basically puts the convergence is really the capital availability. Mm -hmm. the, most of the asset owners either have uh, work from balance sheet, uh, meaning that the capital can be directly available, or work from their own private wealth, mm -hmm. so meaning the capital is available. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, therefore, they have a speed to market on the investments, on the opportunities, mm -hmm. and eventually even on the curiosity of the evolution of the market that is totally different. And so tell me now, what is the difference between a family office or an institutional asset owner? I think the one difference that, mm, that I would say pops on the top of every single comparison is size and complexity. Okay. So you can have, but doesn't mean that a single family office or a private individual is, a, is necessarily simple. You have the largest actually family offices that uh, amongst, uh, sorry, the, uh, the the largest family offices are single family offices mm -hmm. with multi-billion uh, uh, assets in there. And on the other hand, you have sovereign wealth funds that are extremely simple and very thorough. So complexity can vary, depth can vary, type of investments can vary. Very good. So Thomas, if I listen properly to, to Ilias, we can say that family offices behave a little bit like fund managers, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, family offices are becoming more and more sophisticated uh, and the products and services uh, that they need uh, mm -hmm. align more with that of asset managers. But is it an industry where one size fits all? No, not really. Uh, it, is, it is important to, to appreciate uh, this at several levels, mm -hmm. single family offices and multi-family offices. A single FO uh, have been investing in private uh, equity in alternative asset industry for many years. And our contribution here is to support families in creating holdings, uh, structures that are best suited for, to their needs, to their objectives, uh, from simple SPVs to the regulated funds. Mm -hmm. And what about multi-family offices? From our point of view, uh, this is the most important trend uh, of the market right now. Uh, in aggregate, an multi one multi-family office can represent assets under management ranging from mm, few hundred millions to billions euro. And, and with all those uh, um, euros, what exactly do they do in the alternative space? MFOs are now in a position to structure their own alternative offer, mm -hmm. um, creating investment vehicles tailored to their clients. Mm -hmm. And how is IQEQ able to assist in this context? Clearly, we structure, administrate and manage these funds um, on their behalf, of course, and provide all the regulatory security required uh, by their investor clients. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, Thomas, correct me if I'm wrong, but we can actually say that uh, family offices are really the next uh, generation of wealth managers. Clearly, they are. So uh, I think this is at least what we see acting more and more as well. 
Very good. And so, Richard, can you just tell me how well is Luxembourg positioned to attract family offices? Thank you, Jérôme. So Luxembourg has three things. Um, one, um, generally there's an amazing evolution about the use of alternative investments by ultra-high net worth, so individuals and family offices. Um, and that's something where Luxembourg has really evolved very strongly in mm -hmm. terms of the offering, um, the solutions that, that you can use. So the sophistication. Secondly, internationalization. Um, mm -hmm. Families are more and more across the globe. Um, so they need solutions that are recognized in various countries in a way that is acceptable, uh, user-friendly, uh, where there's a look-through. Uh, also, governance and substance. Um, points that were not really on the radar of ultra-high net worth and families, they have come up to the radar. Um, families, family offices and ultra-high net worth expect a very much robust governance and substance in order to comply with regulation. So if I follow you well, maybe a few years ago they were buying things they didn't really understand from specialists like you. Right now they understand everything and they buy from you exactly what they need. They buy mm. from the solutions Luxembourg can offer because they believe it is the best uh, suited in class to the needs they have. Mm -hmm. Also, second point, um, the general offering around alternatives. Mm -hmm. So I think it was mentioned by Thomas before, the evolution into using alternatives is a big trend and Luxembourg offers various solutions mm -hmm. on how to invest into alternatives. Uh, single investment, co-investment, so the ecosystem uh, is also supportive. So there's the tools and the ecosystem. So the banking, the service providers, the lawyers, the tax advisors are all in Luxembourg supporting this evolution into the alternative space. Yeah, we, we've seen that uh, from the 90s until the beginning of 2010, uh, they, uh, Luxembourg built this ecosystem in the uh, illiquid, uh, uh, the liquid, sorry, uh, uh, spectrum, and they managed beautifully this transition into the alternative over the past 12 years with uh, the success that we can see at the Luxembourg Private Equity Association, for example. That's absolutely right. In addition to this, Luxembourg was one of the four riders in terms of implementing a law around family office activities. Mm -hmm. So in 2012, a law was established to define the activities of family offices, which includes single and multi-family mm -hmm. offices, as we've, as we've seen before. So this law somewhat sets a frame and helps to promote and attract Luxembourg um, mm -hmm. to the question you've asked before. So th it's a combination of all the points that I mentioned, but obviously Luxembourg collectively offers the solution and the attractiveness in terms of reputation because despite families not looking to co-invest with others or attract other investors, to put it this way, you still want to have a frame and a governance mm -hmm. that assures you that is viable and secure to operate out of Luxembourg. Absolutely. Uh, so maybe, uh, Elias, would you like to wrap up how family offices are basically transforming the investment landscape in Luxembourg? <coughs> I think it's not just um, in Luxembourg. I think the, the, the asset owners, because we talked about the convergence earlier between family offices and institutional asset owners, mm -hmm. they are converging, I would say, the whole um, uh, landscape uh, of players in the financial uh, arena. I think, first of all, uh, uh, no matter how you take it, Luxembourg always appears in the, in the structuring of whether it is family offices, their investments, and whether it is asset owners, their investments, or their funds. Mm -hmm. So whether it is at governance, at funds, or SPVs, every single time, Luxembourg has something to say, and that is absolutely fantastic. The other thing, I think the biggest trend is that the asset owners are today the largest uh, um, investors. Mm -hmm. They, they have a buy power of uh, roughly 75 trillion euros overall, huh? mm -hmm. which actually means that they are in the center of all the demands from the asset managers, from the products, from regulators who want to protect them. Uh, so therefore, really, the trends around this is firstly independence, the global reach they're having, because it's no longer about uh, utilizing Luxembourg, is about 
what is the best tool for international reach of investments. Mm -hmm. And of course, they require know-how. They require service providers that are global. And the needs, therefore, is, as we said, around, uh, you know, direct investments, understanding, know-how, segundment, people. And they are thinking both Luxembourg and, of course, IQEQ can clearly help that trend internationally. Perfect. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.